you're in Wales where they've introduced a blanket across the board landlord license requirement. Mm. Now, in the UK, there are some um, councils that have adopted this now. I couldn't tell you how many councils it is, but it's growing. So it's coming to the UK. You've got it in Wales already. I wanted to, I'm not, I'm not going to spend a massive amount of time on it, but I wanted to find out from you the good bits, the bad bits about landlord licensing, what you think it's about, why are they doing it? And what do you think is going to be the knock-on effect once we've got it across the whole country? Mm. Okay. So, um, landlord licensing, Rent Smart Wales, it's called here, um, started in 2015. So we're pretty integrated with it now, shall we say. And I wholeheartedly support um, what they intended to achieve which was to raise the standards of the rental sector by making sure that every letting agent and every landlord um, was, was educated to a certain level. Agents had to be having an extra course on top to pass the course, but um, in essence, every single landlord, without exception, if you are doing more than one element of property management or letting you have to have a license um if you don't have to have a license you still need to be registered so that caused the first bit of confusion everyone's like i need to be registered and licensed or just registered i won't go into too much detail about that but it was just the start of a very confusing transition period shall we say um we had our license uh, we were one of the first agents in Wales to get the license, so we were very pleased about that. Awesome. And um, we just, they will, they will audit you within two weeks notice. I guess that's the same with every sort of professional auditing, auditing system. And um, we did that over Christmas and then going into COVID. <laughs> um, we were just waiting and waiting for them to come back with our, with our results, which was um, interesting. But uh, again, we're one of the very few agents in the whole of Wales to get best practice. So again, I kind of live by my, my values, which are making sure that we do our jobs to the absolute best of our abilities. Um, landlords must have gone on this training course as well and passed the test to be a landlord. And a lot of people are found that it was quite an easy online course that could be completed within a couple of hours with no experience so that kind of had a really strange impact here in Wales where we had a lot of landlords go well I'll just do it myself then but a couple of years now down the road we're finding that we're now taking on distressed landlords because they haven't kept their license conditions up to date. They have breached some part of the, of the licensing scheme. So we're talking unlimited fines, rent repayment orders, um, rent stopping orders, banning orders. Um, there are hundreds and hundreds of landlords in Wales now who have tried to kind of do it themselves and really felt the burn of how you even couldn't have the concept of giving your rent back to the tenant because you didn't do something properly it is mind-bending like how the risk level that landlords have here in Wales who manage it themselves is massive um, I've just put out my compliance checklist now and um, there are landlords coming back to me going god I, I didn't I didn't know this I didn't know that well, it's your job. You are running a business. And if you don't know this stuff and you put it into place, you are putting your business at risk. Why on earth would you even, why would you contemplate putting that level of risk? Oh, I didn't know. That's your job to know. It's my job to know. And I do know it because I've got my best practice status with Rent Smart Wales. Um, it is not a business if you don't run it the way it needs to be and you open yourselves up to all these unlimited fines and things so we are seeing kind of a turn in sort of the 
I was going to say more of the average landlord, like one or two, three portfolio landlords, you know, the smaller. How I like to be involved. I like speaking to my tenants. I like popping around for coffee. Mm. We're seeing a, a turn of them going, oh, do you know what? This is a bit too much. Um, we've got the Renting Homes Act coming in next year, which in essence takes us away from the Housing and Tenants Act 1988, it doesn't exist here in Wales next year. No ASTs, no Section 8. I don't think we're gonna, anyone's going to have a Section 21 anyway. We're, <laughs> in fact, here in Wales, we will have an equivalent of a Section 21, whereas you guys in England won't. Anyway, there's a huge amount of change coming. And from my understanding of what's going to happen with English landlords is, um, it's Roper, isn't it? That's, yeah. That's, yeah, it's, so I think the English uh, or the government have, have looked at Wales and gone, I think that test was a bit too easy. <laughs> yeah. I think it, it, it kind of didn't do what it was intended to do. And for English landlords to be educated and qualified, and I think that's the key thing, isn't it? In Wales, they are educated to a certain level, but in England, you have to be qualified to be a landlord and that is going to be a massive disruptor to the yep. to the industry um how they're going to police it i have no idea um policing anything like this here in wales is very difficult it's actually agents like it's agents responsibilities in a legal capacity to dob our landlords in <laughs> yeah so it's it's really a painfully awkward situation to be in and i don't um, think anybody has said dob for many many years i'm an 80s <laughs> kid <laughs> yeah that's what it feels like you're dobbing your mates in <laughs> i know it's bad isn't it but so, okay so what then look we know this is coming right we know that Roper, and by the way, Roper is the regulation of property agents. And in a nutshell, it is coming. It means that anybody who has any dealing with the management of a property, not just letting agents, we're talking about landlords and landlords assistants and landlords teams, anybody who has a dealing with a tenancy and a property rental, is going to have to be qualified. And they're talking about it being a level, a technical level three, aren't they? Mm, which is a which, pr pretty big, it's a pretty big qualification. My, one of my guys is just going through it and it's, it's an 18 month study course. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, um, we know it's coming. And what could, what in your opinion, do you think landlords right now could do proactively to protect themselves from this, apart from just bloody get an agent and stop being a tight <laughs> ass. Oh no, you just took it out. Ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, it's obvious. It's obvious. Yeah, I mean, gosh, if you're really like hell bent on, uh, you know, carrying on with managing your portfolio, then you've got to start educating yourself now. Get on a course, a, a one that's going to give you like credit towards that level three qualification. You got to you know go back to your you you oh, put my teeth back in your university days where you were scheduling your time around your study outside of family outside of yeah cooking dinners doing the washing mm. running the business doing your job an hour a day two three i think it's six hours a week they recommend right to, to pass this on a level three um and that's that's not easy going when uh, you've got everything else to be juggling as well do you know what's funny? We, Great. <laughs> what's funny as well is that this subject, uh, through the podcast, we've probably just lost half of our listeners, even though this is probably the most serious thing coming landlords' way. And I yeah. noticed that whenever I do a podcast that is about something a bit more serious, legislative and legal, then mm -hmm. you can see when that people are only list aren't listening to all of it because I do believe that some landlords feel like. Uh, so I'll, I'll be all right. I'll just I'll do it the old-fashioned way, you know. 